The Canberra Air Disaster. 13th of August 1940, a Lockheed Hudson was coming in to land. It was a nice sunny day with no strong winds, so it should have been an easy landing. As the plane approached the runway, it circled, slowed down and extended flaps. Suddenly it stalled, falling down behind the ridge, erupting into a fireball or just crashing into the ground. Eyewitnesses disagree. However, everyone on board was killed. Now World War II was in full gear. So what makes this plane crash stand out among the many other planes that would crash that year alone? To answer this, we have to move back in time a bit. In 1939, Robert Menzies became the Prime Minister of Australia. He created his cabinet. Among the cabinet members and the military staff were the following people. Brigadier Street was the Minister for Defence. J. Fairbairn was the Minister for Air and Civil Aviation. He had been a pilot during World War I. Richard Elford was Fairbairn's secretary. Sir Henry Gullett was the Vice President of the Executive Council. General Sir White was the Chief of the General Staff. And Lieutenant Colonel Thorntwaite was the staff officer to General White. As war was raging, the Royal Australian Air Force or the RAAF needed more planes. A batch of 100 Lockheed Hudson bombers were ordered and came into service. It was a capable light bomber with a top speed closing in on 400 km per hour. It could carry a bomb load of some 600 kilos and had a range of about 3000 kilometers. However, if one did not keep up the speed at landing, the plane could stall. What does stalling actually mean? An airplane gets its lift from the shape of the wing and the smooth airflow over that wing. Stalling simply means that the wing loses lift for some reason. Too low speed, turbulent air over the wing, and when it does, the plane will fall because it doesn't have any lift anymore. Bigger wings will have a lower stall speed. This is why you have flaps and you extend them when you are landing. It increases the wing area and also the drag. With the Hudson, if you had too low landing speed, it could stall. But of course, when landing, you want to go as slow as possible without losing lift. So you need to learn the aircraft, know the minimum speed you need, as stalling on landing is usually fatal. Several accidents involving the Hudson. On the 17th of July, a pilot had stalled it on landing, killing him and his fellow co-pilot. Some of the Hudson bombers were converted into passenger planes. One such plane was A-16-97. That plane was ordered to fly from Melbourne to Canberra, carrying among others Brigadier Street, Fairburn, Sir Henry Gullett and General Sir White. It took off on a clear day at 9.30 from Essendon, Melbourne. As the plane approached Canberra around 11 a.m., it was seen circling the airfield, turning to make an approach and suddenly disappearing behind a ridge crashing, killing all 10 people on the plane. In one swoop, Australia had lost the chief of the general staff, the minister for defense and the minister of air and civil aviation, and this at a time of war. The question is, how could a then modern plane, flown by an experienced pilot, on what was described as perfect flying condition crash? The pilot Robert Hitchcock had a bit of a rocky start as a pilot and had some incidents before the crash. But others stated that he was a good pilot, an okay pilot. The investigation at the time would blame the crash on pilot error. Too low speed, the plane stalled and crashed. Others would suggest that Fairburn, an aviator in World War I, and he had been determined to practice his landing skills with the Hudson, 
as he had expressed in a letter before the crash. So maybe he was piloting the plane, which could explain the crash in perfect flying conditions. Some witnesses would describe an older man in the pilot's seat after the crash had happened. That would be fitting with Fairburn. We cannot really know who flew the plane for certain. Most likely it was the pilot Hitchcock. But considering it stalling and Hitchcock having flown the plane before, perhaps Fairburn had pulled rank and taken control, underestimating the landing speed, stalling and falling to the ground. This is however speculations. It is also important to remember that the plane type had had some technical issues, so it could also have been a mechanical failure. The crash would topple the Menzies government. The Canberra disaster really was a catastrophe for Australia in 1940, as it happened at the worst possible time, when they were at war. Imagine important members of any cabinet and the head of the armed forces suddenly taken out of the equation. It is not just a matter of replacing the persons, it takes time to get the new staff up and running. And at war, time is usually not on your side. To understand how devastating this crash was, imagine instead the Hudson was a Ju-52 and the equivalent German ministers would have been on board. Or what if this had happened in the USA, a DC-3 crashing, carrying General Marshall, and what that would have meant for the US war effort and the Marshall plan after the war. I hope you liked the video, if you did give a thumbs up and subscribe and hope to see you at my next video.